Earl Wiseman, editor of The Suburban, back with you on The Suburban Radio Hour. My good friends and colleagues, Anthony Bonaparte, features editor. And now, Mark Lidbetter, sports editor. Mark, and you've got a very special guest, Chevrolet Cup Honorary President Kim St. Pierre. Yes, I do. And uh, I want to thank Kim for taking the time today uh, because we have the Chevrolet Cup Girls Provincial Hockey Championships coming. And uh, this Hockey Hall of Fame member, three-time Olympic gold medalist, five-time world champion, is a product of the Lacking Louis region, having played her minor hockey out in Shadagi. Kim, thanks for taking the time and uh, welcome to the show. Oh, thank you so much for the invitation. It's a it's a real pleasure to to give back and to be involved with the Chevrolet Cup this year. So I'm looking forward to uh, watching many games and uh, meeting the girls and hopefully uh, inspire more little girls to uh, to get to play the game. Now this is something that. Uh, up until a few seasons ago, had never happened. How important is it having these championships for the growth of the game, especially because they go right to the youngest group, uh, age group, and, uh, you know, without the base, you can't grow. So how important is it having the Chevrolet Cup for the girls? No, you're exactly right. I think it needs to start from the bottom. It needs to start at the grassroots level, um, to be able to grow the game, the grower numbers in Quebec, they've been the same for the last seven, eight, nine years. So I think now we're at the point, um, because of the PWHL, the pro and women's league, it's, it's all about being able to see it on TV, to be able to go watch some games. And that's how the little girls get um, inspired and ask their parents if they can play hockey. Um, so I think, um, Having events like the Chevrolet Cup and uh, also we're seeing a lot more um, girls hockey tournaments or girls hockey schools in the summer. Um, I think the more opportunities are uh, out there, I think the more girls will want to play hockey. And and also for the parents, I think it's fun to see um, so many opportunities for for their kids to, to be involved in the game of hockey and uh, when I grew up, I, I looked up to the Montreal Canadiens. There was not uh, too many great uh, like women role, role models uh, playing in the NHL. There was none until Manon Réon, uh made it, so it, it was so special. But now the, the little girls playing hockey can look up to Marie-Philippe Poulain and, and Anne-Renée Desbiens. And it's just uh, yeah, great role models to look up to. And, and uh, now they can dream of playing in their own professional league, which is so much fun. And the girls were smart today, too. I got to notice that they actually canceled practice for today. No going out in the snow. Um, it, it has to be a, a very big treat for you, though, to be asked to be the honorary president, having played in Lac St. Louis in your minor career. And now you're involved as a coach with your son's teams in, uh, in St. Laurent. So I guess this has got to be very special for you. Oh, yes. It's uh, it's always so special uh, to be involved and be, uh, being asked to... Uh... Uh, to help and support uh, any initiative. And yes, I grew up in, in Chattagay, so I got to play all over Lac St. Louis uh, growing up. But I, I played with the boys until I was 18 years old. And then I transitioned to women's hockey when I, uh, I went to McGill University. But now to see that so many little girls all over Lac St. Louis or all over Quebec are, are, are being hockey players, it's, uh, it's so amazing to see. It. And I hope uh, that it's going to keep growing and uh, now we're talking with the little girls playing hockey, but uh, for me as a hockey mom, it was it's always been so fun to go on the ice and, and coach my uh, my two boys with my husband. But I hope we see more moms or uh, more women involved in the game as referees or as uh, coaches. Uh, I think it's great if they uh, they're able to learn the game, to learn how to be a hockey coach, and and wanting to um, to coach uh, girls teams. I, I think that's where we're at now. We want to grow the game from from everywhere, and uh, I think the, the Chevrolet Cup will be able to offer uh, many opportunities and uh, hopefully yeah, inspire uh, everyone to get involved. And the games start this coming Thursday and run through until Sunday at different rinks throughout the region, including Dollard and uh, Samuel Moscovich in Cote St. Luke. Kim, I want to thank you for joining me, and uh, I hope to catch you at one of the rinks. I'm probably going to be doing the tour, too, covering the different finals. Perfect. We'll see you uh, for sure at the rink. <laughs> Chevrolet Cup Honorary President Kim St. Pierre. So, Mark, uh, the National Bank is showing some interest in a new initiative for student athletes. What's that about? Yeah, I wanted to make sure to deposit this one in the paper when I got the uh, notice about it. 
course you uh, did. Yeah, I know, but it's the National Bank Bursary Program, and they do it in part. By the way, just in case people didn't catch that, the bank, deposit, get it. This is Mark's, Interest. Mar Mark's <laughs> artistic temperament coming out, the, the puns, but go ahead. Do it. Yeah, but uh, no, the National Bank Birth Free Program, along with the Ale Aleo Foundation, I mean, they've done these bursaries for 32 seasons. This is the 32nd edition, and they're handing out bursary to deserving student athletes. And this time around, there were 22 uh, recipients from 18 different sports. They shared in $100,000 in bursaries and services, and that's going to help them in training and academic expenses. And among those uh, recipients was a trio of local athletes. You had Kirkland's Cristela Brunetti Burns, Alexis Chevrier of St. Lazar, and Outremont's uh, Patrick LeBeau. Now, Brunetti Burns is an artistic gymnast, uh, and the 17-year-old was a quadruple medalist at the Canadian Championships in the junior category, and she finished third on the beam in the Junior Artistic World Championships. So she's an up-and-comer. Uh, she's in secondary four at uh, John Rennie High School. And now the 17-year-old uh, Chevrier was the top hitter uh, and standout catcher at the Canadian Championships in 2023. And uh, Chevrier is in her first year in pre-hospital emergency care, uh, care and plans to become a paramedic. Now, Alpine skier LeBeau, he finished 19th in the Super G discipline at the 2023 Canadian Championships. He's presently studying in his first year for a bachelor's degree in business admin at HEC Montreal. And following that, he plans to do his master's degree in sports management. Now, it's a theme you'll notice with all these student athletes. They're taking some pretty tough courses while they're training for high-level competition. So good on them. Terrific. Um, curling is making... Uh is making some uh, sweet sounds at the Quebec Games. Yeah, and it was. It was a sweet repeat for the boys and girls curling squad. Could you repeat that? Week. It was a sweet what? Well, it was a sweeping success. No, no, that was good. Sweet repeat. I'm, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm promoting your, your talents as, as a wordsmith. <laughs> Deposit no, bank, for the sweet Louis repeat. Teams, the boys and the girls <clears throat> at the Jeux de Quebec that were held in Sherbrooke this year, both teams came home with gold for a second consecutive year, and both teams train out of the uh, Point Clair Curling Club, so they get good lessons there for sure. Now, the girls' team of Summer St. James, Leonie Lamar, uh, Emma Nguyen, and Winter Shop went a perfect 7-0, and but it was a tight final with Lac St. Louis outlasting the Saguenay Lac St. John squad by a 7-6 score. Now, the boys' team of Zachary Jan Idlo, Owen Patterson, Nicholas Jan Idlo, and Cole Richard, and Kobe Olszewski, they also played to perfection. They went 6-0, and and it was Laval falling to them in the gold medal game by an 8-5 score. So just, uh, you know, they've got the men's world on now, but these are the future players that are going to be going to the men's and the women's uh, championships. You know, I, 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 I read, I, I, re I know this, you know, uh, curling ha has a lot of very loyal adherents, but I read an interesting historical fact about, about curling in Montreal, that the, the, the curling club, I think it's called the Royal Curling Club of, of Montreal, was the mm -hmm. first sports organization to get a royal warrant in the 1820s or 1830s. The one who's got who's down on De Maisonneuve in, uh, near Westmount. A long and storied history. I mean, the first one in Canada, any sports organization. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's going to be you know it, it should be actually our national sport, I guess, but hockey in the winter. Well, la, la, in the summer, la, la, lacrosse the lacrosse aficionados would give you an argument for that. We're tied up against the time, but the Great Cup is coming to the West Island, I hear. <clears throat> yes, uh, Kirkland is going to be celebrating Lakeshore football's uh, Pee Wee and Bantam team for their perfect seasons and their provincial championships. And the Montreal Maverick team, which was a lot of Lakeshore players that went to Florida and won the World U13 Flag Football Championship. And joining in that celebration I'm going to be talking about next week is going to be uh, Mark Whiteman was there from the Alouettes, the president and CEO. And... Uh, They'll have a couple of players that come along, you know, that uh, are going to be there to inspire the boys. Mark, and of course, we're going to be out looking at the Lac St. Louis Regional Hockey Championships. Gold medals are on the line. Mark, thanks very much as always. Great report. Great being with all you guys. Anthony, Mike, Mark. 
And thank you most of all, Montreal, for listening. I'll be back with you next week on the Suburban Radio Hour.